be back home because this is my home. And no matter where I preach or worship, you are my family. And it is you, each of you, that I miss in your own special way. Eh, some of you a little more than others, Jerry. But, you know, it's the way it goes. Um, no one gave me any announcements this morning other than the ones that are in the bulletin. Is there any specific announcement that we need to make or changes? Okay, Deb said mention the drive for the community cares, which you can see is in your bulletin, and it is uh, asking for donations of toilet paper and paper towel or as we write them in our house, TP and PT, so that you know that it is a necessity in this world that people need them. Okay, another notice. My printer broke this morning. So my book, my sermon looks a little this jumbled, a little cross out and all, so let's hope it all goes well. Let <laughs> me say our prayers here as we are going through this beginning and we are meditating. I'm meditating on the fact that I hope I remember what I wrote. So, we are here to worship our God, who loves us in our faults, in broken printers, and in family hugs and kisses. So to each of you, let us worship God together as God's family. Mm -hmm.
family to pray our confession before our Lord and before each other. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in raising Jesus from the grave, you shattered the power of sin and death. We confess that we remain captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We overlook the poor and hungry, and pass by those who mourn. We are deaf to the cries of the oppressed, and indifferent to calls for peace. We despise the weak, and abuse the earth you made. Forgive us, God of mercy. Help us to trust your power, to change our lives, and make us new. Amen. Here. Hear and believe the good news. God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God reaches out to us again and again and again, that we might turn away from what is destructive and turn toward what is life-giving. God reaches out to us with forgiveness, assuring us that we are the beloved children of God and equipping us to serve God and our neighbor in this world. God forgives us, encourages us, and frees us to love and to forgive others. Thanks be to God. This 
is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
verses. The Old Testament says page 5 in your pew Bible, but I'm going to read it from a different version, so good luck. Try to follow along. <laughs> Starting at chapter 6, verse 6. I'm sorry, I'm going to start at verse 5. The Lord saw that humanity had become thoroughly evil on the earth, and that every idea that minds thought of was always completely evil. The Lord regretted making human beings on the earth, and he was heartbroken. So the Lord said, I will wipe off the land, the human race, that I have created, from human beings to livestock to crawling things to the birds in the skies, because I regret I ever made them. But as for Noah, the exception, the Lord approved of him. Again, starting at 12. God saw that the earth was corrupt because all creatures behave corruptly on the earth. But God said to Noah, the end has come for all creatures since they have filled the earth with violence. I am now about to destroy them with, along with the earth. So make a wooden ark. Make the ark with nesting places and cover it inside and out with tar. This is how you should make it. 400 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and complete it with one foot from the top. Put a door in the side and in the hole below, make a second and third deck. I am now bringing the floodwaters over the earth to destroy everything under the sky that breathes. Everything on earth is about to take its last breath. But I will set up my covenant with you, Noah. You will go into the ark together with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. For all living things, from all creatures, you are to bring a pair, male and female, into the ark with you to keep them alive. For each kind of bird, from each kind of livestock, and from each kind of everything that crawls on the ground, a pair of each will go in with you to stay alive. Then take some kind of food and stow it with, and stow it as food for you and for the animals. And Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. This is the word of the Lord. seed of this sermon came to me while I was reading a novel. Those of you who know me know that's what I do most days anyway. The book I was reading is called The Lincoln Highway by Armour Tolles. The hero of the book, Emmett Watson, when he was about 16, decided he wanted a part-time job. His father was a farmer, but Emmett did not want to farm. So he went into the small town in Nebraska where he lived and asked the local contractor if he could teach him to be a carpenter. The builder was curious and asked Emmett why, as his father was a farmer with animals and land, why wouldn't he want to learn farming and take over his family's place when he was older? And Emmett replied, Joe, Joe had land and animals, but Noah had a hammer. And I think his story turned out so much better. I like Noah's story. So I thought, maybe we should take a closer look at Noah's story and see why Emmett liked it so much. And then maybe we will see so many of the nuances that we miss when we tell the story to children. When I read Genesis 6-6, six, six, that God regrets creating humankind and is heartbroken over the state of the earth, I can hardly breathe. But I think the Lord God is sorry that the earth is filled with evil and violence. I too am heartbroken. God decides to destroy the entire earth at this time, except one righteous man, Noah. I often wonder 
how God feels about the earth today. For there is as much violent and hurtful, hurtfulness, disaster, and ugliness in our time as there was in Noah's. God must still have some regret over the creation of humankind, maybe at least once a year, or a day, or even maybe a minute. But we have Noah's story. Now the scripture doesn't tell us that Noah had a hammer. I just thought it was a cute little story. It doesn't even tell us Noah had any tools. It just tells us Noah had a plan. A plan that God gave him to build this boat, this ark. And it was to be huge. I read the common English version as opposed to the NRSVs that are in your pews so that you could hear feet instead of cubits. And that maybe you would have some idea of the size of the ark. It was 450 feet long. That's a football field and a half. It was 75 feet wide. We're putting elephants in there now. And 45 foot tall. Room for giraffes. This boat is big. Big. Because God's plan is big. <coughs> then you're going to Noah to fill this ark. You're going to fill it with your family and your children, your sons and their family. And there's going to be a place for the animals. All of these things are going to fit in this ark. Now if we read a little farther into chapter 7, we would hear God has an update. Update Noah on this plan. You're going to need to take seven animals of clean into the ark. Seven pairs of those clean animals. Now I remember teaching Sunday school here in the fourth and fifth grade class. Probably uh, the Delaney Crim, Fetter Girls kind of group. And I remember saying to them, now why do you think God would want more animals? And correctly, one child said, well, I guess they need to feed something to the lions. <laughs> True, that's a good answer. But one of my other favorite children, who I will not mention, said, I think Noah might just have wanted a big map someday. <laughs> but as we see the work going along, the plan is reviewed and revised to fit the needs of Noah and his family and the animals. Now, one part of this plan is not made clear in the scripture. How long did it take Noah to build the ark? Trivia question of the day. How long did it take Noah to build the ark? You don't just start on a Saturday morning with a hammer and a plan and have a 450-foot boat complete by Monday morning. No power tools. We're not even sure if his sons helped. But scholars assume it took between 55 and 75 years, years, to build the ark. In our world of immediate gratification, a plan that takes 50 years to complete would seem like a difficult strategy to accept. And perhaps this is some of our issues when we imagine climate change or proposals for space expeditions to Mars generations away that we cannot imagine. You can't start on Saturday and finish by Monday? Well, what good is that? Yet Noah continues with his plan. Say it took 60 years to build the ark. I wonder how long it took to collect the animals now. In faith, I'm going to dream that this is part is like the children's books and posters. God all of a sudden whistled or whatever, and the animals came along, parading up the gangplank two by two. Even the cats, Ron. <laughs> they went up there two by two behaving themselves. And then at that moment, God shuts the door. Well, 50, 60 years have gone by, the door shut, let the rains fall. You'd think at least it would start to drizzle, the clouds would come over. Maybe, maybe it would get a little dark. No. Chapter 7, verse 10 says, The waters of the flood began upon the earth 
seven days later. Really? Noah took 50 years, built the ark, got the animals, everybody's in, and you're not even going to make it rain right away? Seven days? I got, I wonder what Noah and his family were thinking where they were in, like, anybody sure it's going to rain? Anybody see clouds? Anybody see, get the forecast? Anybody check their app? For, okay, the rain's coming, they say. Planning and working, building and collecting. You want it to get rolling immediately. But this is God's time. And God said, no, you guys sit in that ark for seven days. Okay. And now the floodwaters start. And we have the world famous 40 days and 40 nights. But really, that's how long the rain fell, 40 days and 40 nights. And then it took 40 days for the rains to stop falling and the water to go down a little bit. And then it took another group of days for the boat to flow past that the water's down to a place where they're near the ground. And then Noah does the famous, sends out the raven, the raven comes back, sends out the dove, the second dove comes back. Finally, when Noah sends out the second dove, it doesn't return to the ark, affirming that there is now dry land. And God calls Noah to come out of the ark and to return to the land and rebuild the world. And Noah's first act in this new world is an act of worship. Building an altar, using that hammer again to worship the Lord. And the Lord responds with the covenant as promised that never again would God destroy the earth with floodwaters, and the covenant would be sealed with a beautiful rainbow. So often Noah's story is given the impression that it happened in 40 days and 40 nights. But it was actually a plan that took years. Now, at least, at least 50 of them, close to probably 75. And it only started with a righteous man with God's plan. Our gospel story today, which Carlton read so beautifully, is also about a man with a plan. <coughs> Daily, blind Bartimaeus sits by the road in Jericho, begging travelers, those going to and from Jerusalem, to give him some aid, a little money, a little food. But one day he hears that Jesus, the healer, is going to pass by the road. Bartimaeus knows Jesus is coming and starts to yell out, Jesus, son of David. Bartimaeus yells again when the people say, Stop. Jesus, son of David, help me. And Jesus calls him near and says, What would you like me to do for you? Really? Jesus, you can't see. What do you think? What, 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 what's your guess? But Bartimaeus says, Lord, I want to see again. And Jesus says, go. Your faith has made you well. And Bartimaeus does go. But not like many different people healed in the scripture. He doesn't go in a different direction away from Jesus. He goes down the road with Jesus. I wonder if that was part, part of Bartimaeus' plan that day. Probably not. He had no idea Jesus was going to come when he started that morning. But maybe it was God's plan to add another believer to Jesus' disciples. I spent many, many hours of the last 10 days thinking and studying, reading and writing about these two men, Noah and Bartimaeus. And their interactions with God, and what it might have to say to us today. The last 20 months have been a flood on this earth of biblical proportions. The earth has not just had floods and fires, but obviously a world health crisis, a national and international crisis of violence and hate. And I can imagine God today still feeling that heartbrokenness and that sorrow, the grief that God feels for each of us who feels that grief and heartbreak and sorrow. 
And I also worry tremendously and say my prayers daily. The anguish and mental health of so many in our community and in our world, especially for the teens in between of our world. This is a crisis that we again will be facing. And what are we to do? First, we are to pray. Pray for understanding, for empathy, and sympathy. Pray that we discern the call each of us has for our own hammer, our own tool, our own part in God's mission. I have no illusions that I am a Noah, knowing God's master plan. But I believe each one of us is a piece in God's plan. And believe me, there's a plan. My faith, your faith, each of you has faith or you wouldn't be here today. Faith that the conviction of God's plan for humanity. We hear that in, from the prophet Jeremiah who tells us, I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster. To give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, the Lord says, you will find me. God's ultimate plan has been matched. God's ultimate plan is being, has been fulfilled in the birth and life and death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who was the healer to Bartimaeus, is still the healer for each of us today. God's promise of a building, of building a new Jerusalem, bigger and better than any hope, is still true. The plan of God is in motion, and God's plan will not fail.
And I will take full blame. I'm sure I sent the wrong one to Ernest, even though I wrote one different one to Ernest. So good. It all, it all worked, not by plan, but it all worked. <laughs> and now, let us affirm what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Um, Bill Beck wasn't feeling well, so he asked me to, to do the prayer, then to also he gave me this list of prayer focus for this week. So um, to let you know, Ruth Mowry died on the 18th of October, and gravesite services will be held for her at Fort Indian Town Gap on November 8th. For those of you who have been praying, Wendy Schultz, the daughter-in-law of Early Heckendorf, died on Wednesday, the 20th, at UPMC Harrisburg. So, um, service arrangements are incomplete. I talked to Early on Friday, and unfortunately, I have nothing much to say because Early just cried and we said a prayer. And that was how that went. So please keep the family in your prayers. Nancy, we pray for you as you have been going through a few medical uh, issues, Nancy Jacoby, and we keep you in our prayers. We pray also for the Dars, both Ellen and Dick. Ellen is uh, very weak and sleeps most of the time. Dick does his best to take care of her. So they uh, request that they have no visitors or calls. The cards are appreciated. Tracy Summers had laparoscopic, big words for me, knee surgery and to repair a torn meniscus. And this is, oh, this is to happen on Monday, October 25th. That'll be tomorrow, <coughs> my days are right. So please keep Tracy in your prayers. And Nancy and Jack, Augustine, Jack is having definite mobility problems. And Nancy is waiting for an appointment for surgery to have a kidney removed. So the Augustines uh, also, I think, the appreciation of cards and your prayers for them. And a special prayer for Bill. He says he just has a cold, but we hope he's feeling better very soon. Let us now prepare our hearts and be in prayer before our Lord. God of the planners, of the dreamers, God of the abused, the homeless, God of the oppressed and the oppressor, God of the politician, the caregiver, the banker, the cook, the teacher, the doctor, the police officer, the prisoner, God of every single last one of us, you are our God and we are your people. You are our God and we are your people in need. We are your people in need because we see a world that is also in need of love and reconciliation, justice, and the kind of peace that can only come when there is justice. We are your people in need because so many layers have been peeled off and we complain about the problems out there, but also miss the problems within ourselves. We are scared, so give us courage. Give us courage to see and call out the truth of sin and evil in our world. But also give us eyes that continue to see your hand in the midst of our fear and uneasiness. Give us bravery and wisdom to use your plan for our future. We pray for children and women and men of the Middle East. May Pastor Tony and his mission companions help with medicine and prayer. 
give sustenance to all people working to alleviate the suffering caused by weather disasters that have ravaged our world. Today especially we pray for the people of Haiti, especially the mid missionaries who have been captive, 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 captured, captured, and for their immediate release. We pray for all suffering with illness and for all those saddened with grief. Especially this day, we pray for Earlene Heckerdorn and the Show family on the recent death of Wendy. We pray for all people suffering from COVID and its effects. Grant us wisdom to make intelligent medical decisions. Be with our loved ones, those who are struggling with relationships or are worried about work, or seem to have no sense of you, Lord, in their lives. We offer a moment of silence for what is on our hearts. Good. 
today could be no better than Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Again, from God. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster. To give you a future filled with hope. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all your heart, God says, you will find me. You can depend on this promise. Amen. Woo! <laughs>